glorious people of YouTubers. This is Jaya Games. I am Ian. With Melon's backstory. Um, yeah, I've been watching, um, well, going back and re-watching, that is. Well, no, not really re-watching. I've watched his channel before, but not this particular series. I've been going back and watching, uh, Gophers, um, Return to, no, Skyrim, let's play Skyrim again videos, there we go. Uh, he's the guy that you've probably seen. Basically, every time you go to the Skyrim Nexus, he is the guy who has all of the videos on there. They're called the Skyrim Mod Sanctuaries. But he does, uh, mostly he does Let's Plays. Um, of course, the mod stuff is also, it's basically 50-50 between that, uh, between the mod stuff and his Let's Plays, but... I, I like his Let's Plays better, because he actually, you know, yeah, sure, seeing a bunch of mods is interesting, but seeing a guy do guy-related guy things is, is just, it's it's funny. Um, but anyway, I, um, and I noticed something, that he he puts quite a bit of emphasis on this, uh, the story of his characters. He, uh, the first one, he did Steve, um, the Orc Warlock, and I can't really remember his backstory, and I don't think it was very important throughout the Let's Play. Um, definitely not referenced as much, but in the Again series, he does uh, a librarian named Richard, and um, <clears throat> his backstory is like really quite often referenced like, um, like as jokes and stuff, so... Um, and, you know, Richard, he has a real personality, you know, I, I feel, you know, I, I feel like there's a sort of really fleshed out personality there, and I, I kind of want something like that to be a thing with Melon. Um, so I've, I've been, I've been coming up with a backstory for him for a, a good long while now, so let's get started with that thing. Um, so first off, the most important thing is that, uh, Melon <coughs> was, uh, he was an Imperial, of course, he is an Imperial, um, and his ancestors created, um, they founded a shipping and trades company, a uh, shipping and trades company that was very, um, very prominent. This was before, of course, the time of the East Empire Company, which is, by the way, the worst parody name for anything ever to drive home the message of the, uh, Im imperialism and oppression. Anyway, Bethesda fixed that in an update or something. Um, <laughs> like, you can fix that in an update. Um, anyway. There's that. Alright, never mind. Um, <clears throat> anyway. This was before the time of the East Empire Company being a thing, so Melon's Ancestors Company was very much able to uh, rake in the profits, um, although not very much of the profits. Um, their company was really more focused uh, on being based in Skyrim and Morrowind, not very much anywhere else. However, the East Empire Company was founded, and because of its affiliation with the government of the Empire, it was able to reach across the entirety of the Empire. Um, so, you know, they really sort of drowned Melon's Ancestors Company out quite a bit, and eventually... the heck? What was that? Oh, that was the smoke effect from the smelter. Alright. And so, Melon's Company was bought... Uh, Melon's Ancestors Company, that is was bought by the East Empire Company, but it was sort of, you know, Google buying YouTube, or YouTube buying Twitch, or Facebook buying the Oculus Rift sort of thing, where, you know, it's technically part of their company, but they, you know, they have full, basically full autonomy over what they do, um, but they have to do half of their business in the name of the East Empire Company. <coughs> Uh, and, you know, give those, give those profits to the East Empire Company. Uh, and eventually it was completely just absorbed, but, uh, because it was a family business to begin with, it was, uh, you know, it was still 
you know, the the linear lineage thing was still uh, was still a thing. So it's just basically a family owned um, branch of the East Empire Company. <coughs> um, and so Melon's father, the last um, uh, inheritor of it, his name was Dave. <laughs> his name is Dave, rather. He is still alive. Um, but Dave grew up on a farm, so he's he's a nice, he's a rather simple man. But um, <clears throat> of course, um, he didn't. When he inherited the company, he had no clue what he was doing. Uh, the only reason that it ever remained successful was by, um, <clears throat> you know, him having some people who, you know, knew what they were doing. Uh, but now, because the East Empire Company has a, has basically become a monopoly, um, there aren't very many people who know how to go into shipping and trades, or who want to, for that matter. Nobody really wants to go up against the East Empire Company. Like I just said, they're a monopoly. Um, so, you know, there was that thing, and he, so Melon's father was like, well, I want him to grow up with, you know, the same sort of ideals that I did, but at the same time, I want him to know what he was, what he's doing. So, they moved to Bruma. You know the one, the one by Cloud Ruler Temple, the place that got attacked by the giant Oblivion Gate in Oblivion. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Um, <laughs> but, um... It's not going to be that much of a spoiler. It'll it'll eventually show up in my Oblivion Let's Play. Um, <clears throat> but so, you know, Bruma filled with quite a few Nords. So, in, in fact, so many Nords that it might as well just be another part of Skyrim. So, uh, the debate over Talos worship was just as lively there as it is in Skyrim. Um, you see, the Great War was before Melon's time. Melon is only in his 20s, and the lore dictates that the um, Great War happened 30 years ago, so Melon never got to see what the Empire was like before the Thalmor took over, uh, although <clears throat> when he grew up, because he's in his 20s, it was only a, f it was only a couple of years afterwards, um, and anti-Thalmor sentiment was still very lively. The Thalmor hadn't entirely stamped it out yet. So, Melon's teachers at his elementary sort of schools, um, <clears throat> uh, taught him about how great the Empire was before, uh, before the Thalmor came along, and how just beautiful they, they did all that they um, considered everyone's opinions, they let people worship who they wanted to, oh, it was so great, and then the Thalmor came along, and they ruined everything, oh, the Thalmor, I hate the Thalmor so much, ah. Um, and that caused Melon to really despise the Thalmor, of course. Um, <clears throat> of course, at the same time, he, um, um, uh, he knew that the Empire, at the moment, wasn't strong enough to go, uh, isn't strong enough to go up against the Thalmor. Um, so, his belief is that, and, and this is also from sort of an economic standpoint as well as a belief-based standpoint, but he, um, <clears throat> he knows that if the Empire retains its resources, which it gains most of from Skyrim, uh, then it will eventually be able to be strong enough to take over, to, you know, to go up against the Thalmor again and overthrow them and bring Talos worship back. But at the moment, the Thalmor are seriously screwing with that idea. Um, <coughs> and the Stormcloaks are screwing with the idea of the Empire being able to overthrow the Thalmor. Um, because, you know, they're all like, Ooh, Skyrim must be a sovereign nation, its own thing, oh, cut off trade with the Imperials. And the Imperials are like, please, please don't cut off our resources. We want to be able to overthrow the Thalmor. Um, <clears throat> so, there's that. Um, anyway, so Melon was taught at Bruma, and of course, because of its nordliness, 
Um, <clears throat> no school system taught by Nords would be complete with, uh, without some form of combat training. So Melon found that he was quite prominent, uh, proficient, rather, with a bow. He, uh, had pretty decent aim, he felt. Apparently not when trying to get an arrow off of a TARDIS door. Arrow? Okay, apparently not when getting an arrow off a TARDIS door. Um, but you know, he had, he, he has decent aim. Um, he also found that he really is good with short swords. However, um, he's, he's alright with a broadsword or even a dagger. Um, <coughs> But, um, so there was that, and, um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, so he grew up, and then he went to the Imperial City to study at a university, but not the Arcane University, although Melon would really, would really like to learn a bit more about magic, um, but not the Arcane University in the Imperial City, sadly. Um, and there he learned all the things about shipping and trades and stuff, and ooh, he, he gained some knowledges, um, so that he'd be decently equipped to, um, <clears throat> you know, to handle the, uh, the, uh, branch of the East Empire Company that his father runs currently. Um, and he, he always found the Imperials in the Imperial City to be really quite odd, spending their free time perusing the shops, perusing the shops in their free time, Melon thinks. He, you know, that surely that's what you do when you're out of arrows. You see, Melon loves hunting. It's like, it was just, it was his favorite pastime back during his stay in the Imperial City. He would spend all of his free time just out, uh, outside the walls of the city, and just setting up a camp somewhere, and, you know, setting up a book, doing his studies, and then waiting for a decent-sized doe or buck to appear, whichever one he felt like hunting that day, <coughs> uh, and shooting it in the bottom, and killing it. It was his favorite place to shoot for Melon. He, 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 he loved shooting deer in the bottom. So, eventually, he figured out the stuff, he graduated from college, got a decent degree, not, you know, nothing like a PhD or anything, who gets a PhD in shipping and trades? Nobody, that's who. <coughs> uh, and, you know, so he, he finally got his expertise sort of thing going on, he, uh, then left the, uh, laughing from upstairs, he left the laughing from upstairs, and, uh, he left the Imperial City, he left Cyrodiil, basically, and, um, <coughs> because he didn't want to live in Cyrodiil all his life, and because his father was still running the, um, the company just fine on his own, uh, Melon went and, you know, he moved to Morrowind, thinking, hey, there's some interesting creatures there, be some good game to shoot and kill by shooting it in the bottom. Melon likes shooting things in the bottom. <laughs> um, but, um, he realized that the ash from Red Mountain was really making things, it, it was killing off pretty much everything. The only thing that was left to shoot was burnt spriggans and weird flamey scribs. It just, nobody, and nobody wants to buy that meat, you know? He wanted to make a li he wanted to make a decent living out of this, not just do it for fun. You know, he has to eat somehow, and God knows he's not eating weird, flamey scribs for every lunch of his life. <clears throat> so, he thought maybe Skyrim would be a better place to go, and so he went to Skyrim. Uh, and on his way over, you know, across the border to Skyrim. Uh, from Marwin, you know, he, he got, he went, he made it through, got his passport all checked and stuff, and, oh, everything's nice, glory to our Stotska, all that, uh, and he made it through, and he went, and on his way 
uh, westward to Falkreath. <coughs> uh, you know, go crossing the volcanic wastelands, or the volcanic marshes, rather, he got attacked by some guys, and they knocked him out. He was unconscious. They took all his stuff, including his passport, so he can't leave Skyrim. <coughs> um, and so, uh, you know, they took his, they took his, all his papers and stuff, and, uh, they, they left him to die. And that is where we picked up um, in, in Skyrim. Yeah, that's where we picked up on the first episode of this thing. And it was great. And um, he was a bit dazed, and that's why he attacked those Thalmor. Definitely not because that was quite beautiful. The recording, basically I ran out of recording space at pretty much the same time that I was going to do my outro. Um, so anyway, uh, as I was saying, he, uh, <coughs> attacked the Thalmor, um, because he was in a bit of a daze, you know, he, he had suffered some brain damage, that's where that scar came from, um, you know, suffering a little bit of, uh, just a minor case of major brain damage, speaking of which, Portal will be coming at some point, um, <coughs> anyway, um, so, um, you know, definitely that's why he attacked them, not because badass music dictated that he attacked them. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, that's Melon's backstory. This is only one episode of the actual, uh, of two actual episodes of TES Tuesdays coming out today. Um, so, you know, um... But so yeah, Melon, the uh, career sort of the the hobby hunter, the um, learned human of some description, the gentle economist. By gentle, I mean you know he is only gently an economist, um, and now the dragonborn. And proud owner of a TARDIS. We'll figure out who she is in the later episode of today. Have a glorious day and an even better tomorrow, guys. And I am really bad at outros. Why are you still here? <laughs>